This is Hard Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tong. With me, I have my friend Jared Bunch, our editor-in-chief of Hard Rhythm Case Reports, because we are celebrating 10 years of Hard Rhythm Case Reports. Jared, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It goes pretty fast, huh? It does. It literally seems like it. I mean, people use that cliche uh, yesterday, but it has gone very fast looking back. Well, you, Jared, you were, I was so lucky that I was part of the inaugural editorial board where there were ventricular arrhythmia section editor that I was looking at. We got all these great, you know, sometimes first observations. And that's really the novelty of Harvard and Case Reports. Maybe take us through a little bit about what you were expecting when you took over the founding inaugural authorship, uh, editorship, and then kind of where it's evolved. Well, that's a great question, and you are a key part of its success. And and we were we initially were given the task of forming a new journal, the first companion to Heart Rhythm Journal, and we they were receiving numerous case reports, and they couldn't take them. We knew there was value in them in forming this separate journal, um, and so the goal was to publish an issue every other month in five to six cases, which was the expected number based upon the rejection. And then just see if it could survive. At that time, we didn't know the interest. We didn't know if people would want to contribute. We didn't know if an open access format was was ideal. Um, but we wanted to try because we one we knew there was value in this type of sharing, and we also knew that it, electrophysiologists gravitate towards novel concepts, novel technologies, novel therapy. So it seemed like the perfect field to jump into. And so we put together a board of, of we had a ventricular arrhythmia specialist, an atrial fibrillation specialist. We wanted people in different countries because we looked at it as a, a um, hub and spoke model that we have enthusiasm around the world. It would help the journal. And we just jumped in. And uh, what we found early on was there's a lot of interest in this type of journal. In fact, uh, we were we went from a goal of every other month to a goal of publishing to a reality of publishing anywhere from ten to twenty articles each month, and uh, having struggling with publishing in a timely way with a long waiting list from time from acceptance to publication, and that's a welcome challenge that we had at that time, but it's clearly blossomed, and we've seen so many of our section editors go on to be senior editors at other journals, and we've seen a lot of our young authors become excellent editorial board members, and our editorial board members become associate editors. So we've seen this this progression of learning and, and the evolution of skills, and just been gratifying to be a small part of it. And that's really my role is kind of helping to run us the ship in a small way. Well, also, we're living in a world, a digital world, that's based on an, a, an attention economy and people have limited attention. So I do think that the evolution of this has been perfect with, you know, Twitter, social media, it's all about bite size information. Can, it looks like we're not the only case report journal you see it with European heart journal. So this is definitely the future, is it not? It is. Uh, case reports have a role to, to spark interest and spark confirmatory tri trials and, and larger studies. But it fits so well into rapid dissemination of education. It's highly visible. It works well in Twitter. We had a, we, early on, our Twitter page exploded. Our Facebook page did well. We've had some hiccups with that because pacemaker pocket erosion is considered a, a image that is not good. And so we've had to apply that our images, need, uh, these are medical images. Um, and, and we had a, a very good Instagram account as well that lends towards this rapid sharing. And the other very important thing is Harvard and Case Reports has always been open access. So it's it can be globally shared, which I think is, is definitely its value. It makes the world a little smaller because we have this community of people interested in what we love, but also it highlights the reach of open access for sharing and education. And I think that's critical. And definitely fulfills that global mission of the Heart Rhythm Society, um, which well, is to make the world a little smaller and bring us closer through education and engagement. So Jared, that means at 10 years, are you going for another 10 years? Uh, how do the terms work and what's the future yeah. of Heart Rhythm Case Reports? 
and that's well, and they initially said this is a 10 year commitment and they saw in the process that I aged rapidly. So they need to get somebody young and enthusiastic into this role. So uh, expect soon that there will be an invitation from the Heart Rhythm Society it will probably be early next year where we start an editor in chief search. And for me, that's going to be exciting because I'm all about different perspectives and a new enthusiastic person with different ideas is great for the journal and I'm happy to have it off. I, I think we've grown it. We magnified it. We've done a lot. There's the opportunity for new growth and improvement. And so, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that the next person and helping in any way, but that will probably come. Uh, you'll see it towards next year. I would actually be probably middle next year. So that is a hard rhythm TV exclusive. We heard it right there that there will be a open call for EIC of hard rhythm case reports. So that's some great stuff. Well, Jared, congratulations, the founding and the inaugural editor for a very, very important journal that really fulfills the mission of Harvard and Journal. And it really catches everyone's attention because I do believe that the world has changed, that I think physician bandwidth is even less so to write complete manuscripts. And EP is so observational and it's so visual that showing vignettes or an image in the form of a case report is definitely probably the way that things are moving because some people just will do tutorials. Um, and that's, again, how the younger generation also is learning. So congratulations on 10 solid years. I also cannot believe it's been 10 years, but that means we've had fun. And yeah, that's uh, true. And I'm looking forward to seeing it being handed off. And we've got, you know, Doug Zipes to Penchen to Sammy Viskin. And now there's a big question mark of Jared Bunch and then, then that face. So looking forward to it. Thank you. And you've been a part of the journey from the beginning. So I appreciate that because you've helped make it successful. Well, thanks for everything you've done, Jared, for the Society, for Harvard Case Reports, and thanks for joining us on Harvard and TV. Thank you. My pleasure.